I was born on the lake. We're fishermen here from father to son. I know Tonle Sap by heart and all the fish which live in it, including those which hide in the mud. I also know the wind, the directions it blows, the mass movements of the fish. Kuyan understands that it is the people who must adapt to the movements of the lake and not the other way around. For Tonle Sap is an ever-changing ecosystem which leads a double life. The lake empties and fills up again according to a seasonal cycle which it imposes on all lakeside life. When the waters have gone, the lake becomes a veritable swamp. When they return, the lake spreads out again, no respecter of boundaries. The entire lakeside ecosystem depends on this primordial aquatic cycle. Every year between May and June, the monsoon returns. Torrential rains batter the whole of Southeast Asia during this period. The water brought by the rain is swollen by meltwater from the Himalayan glaciers. The water gushes down the mountain slopes, and the muddy torrents thus created converge on the immense drainage basin of the Mekong. Then occurs a unique hydrological phenomenon. The flow of water reverses. Whereas the water usually flows from the Tonle Sap River towards the Mekong, all of a sudden this goes into reverse. The pressure of the Mekong in spate becomes so strong that it flows back up in the direction of the lake. The direction of the Tonle Sap River's current is reversed, and the Mekong's muddy water fills the lake. This is when the living heart of Cambodia beats its strongest. The lake is swollen by the river and overflows, flooding the land all around. The surface area of the water increases five-fold at this time. Water rich with sediment floods some 15,000 square kilometers. At this time, Tonle Sap's ecosystem undergoes a radical transformation. The rice fields absorb the excess water, and the vegetation, stimulated by the alluvial deposits, enjoys a new spurt of growth. For several months, the level of the lake keeps rising, from a low of barely 50 centimeters to over 8 meters. A new equilibrium settles between the earth and the water, but it's a fragile one. Tonle Sap is a lake about which much is still unknown, despite years of scientific study. Sylvain Boré, a scientist from the World Fish Center, has traveled here from Phnom Penh, the capital, to carry out his seasonal report on the lake's aquatic resources. He depends on Ku Yan to help him collect his samples. It's impossible to identify the fish in their natural habitat because the lake's water is far too muddy. The only possibility is to capture the fish and place them in a custom-built aquarium. There has been little research done on the fish of Tonle Sap, and yet they are of vital importance to Cambodia. They provide a third of the protein consumed by the population, but no one knows just exactly how long the lake will be able to go on providing fish in such quantity. For Tonle Sap and its fauna, the intensity of the monsoon is a decisive factor. Was the flood extensive enough this year? Was it sufficiently high in nutrients? The good health of the fish's habitats and therefore the abundance of future catches depend on this muddy water. <laughs> Kuyan has spread his net between the tops of submerged trees. 
he knows that these flooded trees, rich with insects and berries, shelter many species of fish. Straight away, Silly Van starts to recognize certain species he was hoping to catch specimens of. See what we have here. That's a Puntioplites, a panga. And is that a chana? Yes, it's a striped snakehead. Here in the Tulesa, we have like uh, three main uh, group of species. So the first one is a uh, Traira. Uh, which belong to the blackfish family. They have small scale. Sometimes the the scale is kind of absent. Its uh, adaptation is very strong. Uh, they can live in a, a water which is uh, less oxygenated uh, during dry season. Another fish is uh, called Traipra that belong to uh, the white fish family. You see, the color is kind of silvery and light. They need clean water. So in dry season, they usually move up to 1,000 kilometers away to find food from uh, upstream. I'm gonna catch another fish, the dragon jaw. That from the gray family. The adaptation is uh, fairly strong. That is why they do not have to migrate too far away from the lake to feed and to breed during uh, rainy season. So usually they just go to the uh, small tributary uh, along uh, the lake. It seems that we do not have the catfish in the tank right now, but uh, we're going to go and find it where it is. There's one important species still missing, Clarias batracus, the walking catfish. It's a remarkable creature whose no-show could be a bad sign for the lakeside ecosystem. Although City Van doesn't feel very comfortable on the water, he still has no hesitation about getting out there in this strange canoe-come-lifebuoy contraption, threading through the branches of the trees in search of the fish he hopes to catch. The scientist's determination finally pays off. This is a, a walking catfish. It, it can definitely uh, walk in the mud during dry season. It's a fish one must handle with caution because of the stings in its fins. Once the walking catfish, one of the lake's rare sedentary species, has been caught, the collection is complete. The lake has a full complement of black, white, and gray fish species. Thanks to the flood, this year again there'll be good fishing.